Hello everyone, this is Cascape Artists with Janine Roche and my guest today is Rachel McMillan and she has a new book out called A Very Merry Holiday Movie Guide and I am so excited to chat with her about this because I love holiday movies and obviously she does too and we talk about them all the time on social media so I wanted to have Rachel introduce herself to us. Uh, hello, my name is Rachel McMillan. I live in Toronto, Canada, um, and I'm an author, but I'm also a literary agent. So basically, my entire life is made of books. And while I write historical romances and some contemporary romances, uh, this was a new avenue for me to pay homage to the made-for-TV Christmas movies that I love. Don't be fooled. Very Merry Holiday Movie Guide is not your Hollywood movies. It is all made for tv christmas movies which mm -hmm. is just the best yes and they're, <laughs> they're really branching out there was a time where we only had one or two channels but yeah. now netflix is in the game and amazon mm -hmm. prime and hulu so we're getting some really good stuff from and and it's it's great tell us what you love about specifically made for tv holiday movies well, especially this year, if anyone is living through this year, it's not the easiest year. I love the fact that when you watch one of them, you're getting a value system. You're getting a cherished moment of family and tradition, but you're also guaranteed a happily ever after. So one of the things I noticed in March when the world started shutting down and all of this COVID stuff happened is that stations started to air made for TV Christmas movies because they knew that they were a way that people could connect with each other, but also feel happy. They've become my safe space. They make you feel warm inside, just like Christmas does. It sounds cheesy, but I love being guaranteed a happy ending. And even though I know it's going to happen and often how it's going to happen, it's just the experience of living through this love story with people that I just, I love. Right. And in this, in this guide, you actually help the readers and the viewers of the movies be able to almost enter in to the Hallmark movie. <laughs> or the Netflix movie, whatever channel it's on. And you actually have lists that are specific for different types of watchers of those movies. Basically, there is a movie for everybody. Um, an animal lover, a book lover, a royal, you know, the royal family, if you love royal princes and princesses. And basically it was just looking at all these movies, their color palette is always specific to the film, silvers and greens and reds, but also deep diving so that if you wanted to incorporate these films into your traditions, especially this year when we're gonna be at home a lot, there's crafts and recipes and ideas for hosting parties via Zoom if you need to, or in person. Um, there really is a made for TV or Netflix or Hulu <laughs> made for entertainment in screen form film for absolutely everybody, which I, I just love. It touches yeah. on so many things. Yes. And I love that they're starting it a little bit early this year. I know mm -hmm. not everybody's a fan of it, but some people we, we need that the early Christmas. Yeah. And so I'm not, I'm not going to be one of the people complaining. Do you have a favorite made for TV holiday movie? I do. It's called A Very Merry Mix-Up. I pay homage to it in the title of my book. It stars Alicia Witt and Mark Lieb, and basically it is all of my catnip. It's a woman who loves antiques and ends up at the wrong house for Christmas while her big city fiancé is back in the city, and she ends up meeting a guy who restores antiques and makes park benches out of church pews, and I just love him um, and it's basically everything I love about these movies it's family oriented it's all about the traditions of Christmas it's people who redefine and refine their passion and love at Christmas and time so I, I just love everything about it so very merry mix-up is my favorite and yeah. I've never seen that one I need to oh, find so it cute. I need to do a search for it so I don't it's a it. lot of people's favorites I've found when I talk to people they're like that's my favorite too so yeah. find it it's very cute <laughs> 
Yeah. So for me, I have a couple that I really liked. Marry Me at Christmas. I really yes. liked. Um, Snow Bride. I love. Might be my favorite. Snow Bride. Snow that Bride is, is a fantastic. Great. That's in my top five for sure. I love that one. Yes. Yes. And it, it's it's so good. Um, and it's got the whole like the journalist who's trying to go undercover yeah. to get the story. I and love that trope. It they really also have a lot great. of chemistry. That's a very, very good one. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then Christmas in the Smokies. It's not a hall Hallmark. I forget. I think maybe. I don't it's, think I've seen that one. It I might be. Heard it's good. It's really good. It's really good. Um, and it's got a musical element to it. And oh. it's very like country, you know, I think it takes place like around Nashville maybe, but okay. it's, it's a sweet one. And, um, and so those, those are kind of my, my top three that, that I really like. Now, one of the things that I, we talk about how there's a certain, there's a certain pattern that you see in a lot of these movies. And sometimes they play with it a little bit. Typically you have the almost kiss and it's, you know, mm -hmm. the kid wakes up at the yeah, wrong time. Yeah, the interruption. Time. Yeah. Yes. Or somebody throws a snowball right before they're about to kiss. Um, and so sometimes you have that and sometimes they just, they get to go for it. It's, it's a lot of fun. So do you have a favorite made for TV movie kiss? I do. And it's actually in a, one of my very favorites, probably next to Very Merry Mix-Up. It's my favorite on uh, Nine Lives of Christmas with Kimberly Sustad and Brandon Ruth. Ruth? Ruth. He was, um, he was Superman, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yes, and yes. he's adorable in this film. And it doesn't happen, at, you're right, often the first kiss happens just before the credits. It's very Jane Austen, right? Pride and Prejudice, the, you know, Colin Firth one, it's the very end. Um, she's hanging mistletoe and he comes and kind of intercepts that and they have this wonderful kiss that's about a third of the way through the film. Ooh. And what I love about it is, for me as a romance reader and viewer, often a kiss can be found in the banter or the dialogue or the way they connect with each other. I'm a huge believer in if you can find any other way to make some palpable chemistry, do it so that the kiss is earned and not just a quick way to establish connection yeah. but this one is earned but also wonderful and it takes their relationship to a new level so nine lives of christmas check it out it's adorable and that is a fantastic kiss oh that's great yeah i i was watching christmas on my mind last year oh that's which, a, that's based on a denise hunter book yes, yeah it is based on the goodbye bride by yes, denise hunter which is a um, fantastic book yeah and it's it's in my favorite series uh contemporary romance series and so yeah. i was so excited that they were making it into a movie but at the at, at one point in the movie the the main characters they have their kiss and i remember we i was having a watch party on uh, twitter i think <laughs> and, and i started like all caps yelling that's not a homework kiss that's not a homework kiss it was so fantastic and it was it yeah, was a good together it was a solid they're in love with each other yeah. let's just get them married right now kind of kiss so it was great yeah <laughs> and i i often I also have to like give a, a bit of a disclaimer to Hallmark that they haven't asked me. I am no way affiliated with them. Um, they want to make sure that their programming is family oriented. So I think that when it comes to physical connection, they are very aware of who's turning in and that kind of, you know, you're not going to get Hollywood style go too far. <laughs> Um, right. So I think that sometimes explains why there's a lack of kissage in yeah. the movie. But <laughs> Christmas on my mind is fantastic. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Now for you, let's pretend that one of your books is going to be turned into <laughs> a made-for-TV movie. Yeah. Which one do you think would be the best that would like, That's kind of so fit the most? Um. Uh, my first ever series was historical mystery romance. It's the Harringford and Watts. It's about a female Sherlock Holmes and Watson who find their love interests in Edwardian era Toronto. And I think it would make a really cute Hallmark series. Um, but I also write contemporary romances set in Vienna amidst the music world. And now that Hallmark has started filming in like Rome and France and even in Vienna this Christmas, 
I think it would be fun to see something like l my love and three quarter time on screen. So yeah. made for TV Christmas people, you can find my novellas <laughs> <laughs> and turn them into films, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully they do sometime because I would love for mm. that audience to be able to, to find your books and your stories because they're so, they're so fantastic. I actually just finished a few days ago reading the London Restoration, which is your new book. Yay. And this is a historical romance. Yeah, and Hallmark for our lifetime, they probably probably won't make that into a film, but uh yeah, this is this would have to be a feature film. Um, uh, <laughs> I was I was telling Rachel a few minutes ago that um this this could be the movie that me and my husband go see, perfect date night movie, because it has the espionage and the 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 danger that followed World War II in Europe and also has the love story. And so this is a fantastic one. It would be great for a feature length movie, but yes, I agree that too much would have to be taken out <laughs> yeah. to be condensed down to a made for TV movie. So we're yeah. going to free to leave that one over here in a different category. <laughs> so uh, what is your favorite tradition that you may mention in here? What, you know, people always say that Hallmark movies and uh, Netflix Christmas movies are full of cliches, but sometimes the cliches are nice. And, yeah. you know, like I'm, I can't wait to make some Christmas cookies this year. I want to yeah. put everything out of my mind and make some really ugly, bad tasting, <laughs> sloppy Christmas cookies. And I don't care if they don't look perfect. I just want to do it after the year that we've had. So you, you state, you know, things like that in this book that people can do to kind of create these parties for themselves as they're watching. So what is your favorite, um, you know, part of the Christmas or the holiday season? I do love Christmas music, especially carols. So when I refer to carols, I'm not just referring to Christmas songs, but I'm referring to the ones that have a religious connotation, like tell the story about Jesus's birth. I love those. But one of my favorite things is when I'm at home visiting my parents and we take out the Christmas ornaments and it's almost like an entire canvas of all the Christmases that went before in our house, but also the tradition of generations before. And I love mm. the nostalgia of that. It's something so simple, but just reliving all those Christmas memories. And as a single woman, I don't really have that, right? Because I don't have the family or the spouse that comes with those traditions. So I get it the most when I go back to my parents' house. And it's a wonderful tradition. And I hope that people this year really spend more, to, because we're going to be at home a lot more than usual, um, spend time making sure that their home is very Christmassy and that the ornaments, whether cra crappy or made out of popsicle sticks when you were in <laughs> elementary school or <laughs> glued together with the glue gun and missing sparkles, they yeah. really kind of tell an entire story. And I would say that's one of my favorite things about Christmas. Oh, that is fantastic. Now, are you like me? I know you're a big traveler. <clears throat> Whenever I go somewhere, I always get a Christmas ornament. Do you do the yeah. same thing? I do, especially because um, I'll, it doesn't work this year, but I often travel in November because it's the off season. And at the end of November, all of the European Christmas markets are usually happening. So I get the best of both worlds. I get to be in the city at a time when the flights are cheaper and I get to experience Christmas there before the droves of tourists. And I'll often pick up little ornaments at the markets and stalls there so yes I if I'm gonna buy a souvenir anywhere even the Alamo when I was at the Alamo <laughs> um, I love the Alamo <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> or Gettysburg or anywhere I I always pick up a Christmas ornament there for sure oh that's yeah I, I love doing that and, and it's a good reminder of the places that you've been in the past yeah and so yeah, it's great. Well, thank ev thank you to everyone for tuning in to this episode of The Escape Artist. Thank you to Rachel for stopping Thanks, by everybody. and sharing with us about her very merry holiday movie guide. Make sure you pick it up. Um, you can find it on Amazon. Um, it's hardback, so it's a great gift book. 
um, to someone who, who loves these movies or yourself, because I'm keeping this copy myself. And, um, <laughs> That's Rachel awesome. also has a lot of other books out. This would be a great gift to give people um, if they love deep, complicated historical romance, a great <laughs> story about a married couple trying to um, reconnect after coming back together after the war, after being such different people after what World War II has done for them. And Rachel has so many other stories. So please um, find her on Facebook and Twitter. She is fantastic to follow on social media. Can you tell us what your, um, where people can find you? Yeah, my handle pretty much everywhere is R-A-C-H-K-M-C, Rach K. Mick. Um, but also Google Rach, Rachel McMillan. Find me on Goodreads because I often talk about what I'm reading and uh, I love connecting over books that I'm loving especially Christmas themed books. So find me online. <laughs> okay. And also she will let you know when she catches a new movie that on um, uh, yes. any of these channels that she absolutely <laughs> loves and she will be willing to chat with you about it. And she's, she's great for that. So thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you to everybody who watched today. So Thanks. We'll see you next time.